Leia here from LeiaForSci.com, and in this video, I will help you understand why electron withdrawing groups are meta directing deactivators. But first, we have to understand what is an electron withdrawing group. An electron withdrawing group, as the name implies, is a substituent on a benzene ring that withdraws or pulls electron density out of the ring. If you think about the law of opposites, you'll recognize that in order for something to pull electrons, it has to be positive or partially positive. And the example we'll use in this video is nitrobenzene, or benzene with an NO2 substituent. At first glance, nitrobenzene appears neutral, but if you draw out the Lewis structure for NO2, you'll see that you have a nitrogen double bound to one oxygen, single bound to another. The double bound oxygen has two lone pairs and a formal charge of zero, the single bound oxygen has three lone pairs and a formal charge of negative one, while the nitrogen has no lone pairs, four bonds, and a formal charge of positive one. So while we have a neutral charge overall, we still have a positive on nitrogen, which is the atom sitting directly on benzene. And that positive nitrogen near benzene wants to compensate for its charge, so it partly pulls on the oxygen that it's attached to, but it's also pulling on the pi electrons that are sitting in the benzene ring. In fact, if you look at the resonance, you'll see that benzene can actually use one of its pi electrons to move towards the nitrogen, causing the pi bond between oxygen and nitrogen to collapse onto oxygen. What we get as a result is nitrogen still bound to two oxygen atoms, but now notice that the oxygen that was pi bound now has three lone pairs and a formal charge of minus one. The first oxygen still has three lone pairs and a formal charge of minus one. Nitrogen is now double bound to the carbon in the ring and still has a plus one charge, but you also have the carbon that lost the pi bound, which is now deficient in its octet and also has a positive charge. This resonance helps you understand how nitrogen withdraws electron density and makes the ring more positive. When you're considering EAS reactions of substituted benzene, it's not the neutral starting molecule that we're looking at, but what you have to understand is the charge and the stability of the resonance intermediate to determine if a substituent will be activating or deactivating. In one of my recent videos, I went through the detailed resonance forms for adding a substituent ortho, meta, and para, and then I showed you a trick for quickly recognizing the position of the carbocation. Since we won't have time to go through everything here, I want you to go back to that video, which you can find on my website at layerforside.com EAS. In this video, I want to give you a mechanism overview to help you understand how the nitro group in fact impacts the intermediate and how that is related to its deactivating meta-directing effects. We'll start by randomly adding a substituent to the ortho position just to see what the intermediate would look like. We have the pi bond reaching out for the super electrophile, and now we show it attached at the ortho position. We have two additional pi bonds still in the benzene ring that are capable of resonating, and we also have a positive charge sitting on the carbon that lost the pi bond but did not gain the electrophile. The two remaining pi bonds are capable of resonating, which means that positive charge is going to be distributed throughout the sigma complex intermediate, and there will be resonance for the remaining pi bonds, giving me something like this. This is where the key to understanding the electron withdrawn group meta-directing effect comes into play. The sigma complex is resonating a positive charge. Now carbon, being a somewhat electronegative atom, doesn't like the positive charge, but at least the resonance can help stabilize that. But now look at the nitrogen and see how that impacts the resonance within the ring. If nitrogen is positive, putting it directly near a positive, unhappy intermediate is just going to have a clash of positive and the entire thing will be very unhappy and very unstable. If you compare the structure of this intermediate, where you have positive near the positive intermediate, to something like benzene that doesn't have any substituents near the positive intermediate, benzene is happier at the intermediate stage and therefore more likely to want to form that stage. When considering reaction rates, you have to ask yourself, is the intermediate stable? If yes, I'm more likely to form it. So comparing nitrobenzene to benzene, nitrobenzene having that positive charge will have a less stable intermediate and therefore a slower unfavorable reaction. This is the very idea behind the deactivating effect of a positive or partially positive group. 
The next thing we want to look at is the directing effects. Now that we understand nitrobenzene is a deactivator, if we do proceed with the reaction, where on the ring will the substituent wind up? Now I randomly showed ortho here, but let's actually look at all the resonance intermediates first. If you go back to the video where I show you the resonance trick, I help you quickly find the position of the carbocation without having to go through all the resonance structures. And we're going to use that trick here because we won't have enough time to actually draw them all out. If I add a super electrophile to the ortho position, that means the positive charges will be as follows. The carbon directly near that electrophile, skip a carbon, next is positive, skip a carbon, and the next is positive. Then we look at meta and apply the same trick. We have the carbon near the electrophile, positive, skip a carbon, positive, skip a carbon, positive. These orange circles represent where that carbocation will be when you resonate the positive charge around the sigma complex intermediate. And finally, if we add the super electrophile to the para position, once again, carbon next to it is positive, skip a carbon, next to it is positive, skip a carbon, and that's our final positive. We've already determined that nitrobenzene is deactivating and will have a slow reaction. But even if we're having a slow reaction, we still want to find the lesser of evils, meaning the reaction that will be less terrible compared to the others. If we have the positive charge resonating around the ring, Take a look at these intermediates for the ortho and para positions. Not only do we have an unfavorable positive in the ring near a positive nitrogen, but we're actually placing the positive charge on the carbon that's directly near the positive nitrogen, and this is about as unstable and unfavorable as you can get. The meta resonance, on the other hand, while it still has that unfavorable positive charge, it doesn't get as close to the nitrogen, so think of it as a less in-your-face type resonance. And therefore, if you have to proceed with this reaction, we'll go with the meta since it's the lesser of the two evils in terms of carbocation placement, and therefore the most likely intermediate to form. Hopefully this helps you understand logically why the nitrobenzene is an electron withdrawing group and therefore a deactivator and a meta director. But for the remaining of the deactivators, I don't want you to memorize them. I want you to understand how they relate and why they're also going to follow the same pattern. The strongest type of deactivator has a positive charge. For example, if we have the NO2, we've already proven that it's positive on the nitrogen and negative on the oxygen. Neutral overall, but positive directly near the ring. You may also see something like an NH3 with a positive charge, or something like an NH with an R group or two, again with a positive charge. These are very strong deactivators because they have a positive charge directly near the ring. You can also have deactivators that have partial positive charge. For example, if you have an ester, recognize that the carbonyl has resonance between the carbon and the oxygen. That means that the oxygen is partially negative and the carbon that's sitting on the benzene ring is partially positive. Similar resonance occurs for something like an aldehyde or a ketone carboxylic acid. You'll also see this resonance in a nitrile, C triple N, because one of the pi bonds can resonate onto nitrogen, making carbon partially positive. Be sure to join me in the next video where I take you through the halogen exception and show you why they're ortho power directing but are still deactivating to the ring. I work through many additional problems from simple to tricky substituted additions within my membership site. You can find details at studyhall.layforsci.com forward slash join. You can also find my entire series on electrophilic aromatic substitution along with my EAS cheat sheet by visiting my website layforsci.com slash EAS. Are you struggling with organic chemistry? Are you looking for resources and information to guide you through the course and help you succeed? If so, then I have a deal for you. A free copy of my ebook, 10 Secrets to Acing Organic Chemistry. Use the link below or visit orgosecrets.com to grab your free copy. After downloading your free copy of my ebook, you'll begin receiving my exclusive email updates with cheat sheets, reaction guides, study tips, and so much more. You'll also be the first to know when I have a new video or live review coming up. If you enjoyed this video, please click the thumbs up and share it with your organic chemistry friends and classmates. I will be uploading many videos over the course of the semester, so if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, do so right now to be sure that you don't miss out.